Why? Why did I buy this car? All right, welcome to today's episode of Rush Up Garage. Hey, why did I buy this 2011 Nissan Leaf electric car? Well, that's a good question. We can talk about electric cars and theorize, you know, why they're good or bad or whatever, but I'm a type of guy that I like to put my hands on things and, and learn about them. So a friend of mine had taken this car in trade and he offered it to me for a very reasonable price. So I thought, you know, what the heck, uh, I want to see what these things are all about. See if they're any good or see how bad they are. Um, are they good value? Are they not? In the environment, are they really good for the environment? I don't know, you decide. This car is a 2011, like I said, Nissan Leaf, all electric, um, no gas, no hybrid, just electric. Now this car, when it was new, had about a 60 to 100 mile range, and that's not very good. Uh, a friend of mine that was a salesman at the Nissan dealer, he drove one to his home, which is about 40 miles away. The next day, uh, while returning, he didn't think he was gonna make it back, and that was on a brand new car. He come creeping in on, on E, basically the charge was done. So these cars never did have much range. Now this particular car here has 64,400 uh, miles on it, and it's been taken care of. It's not really beat up. It's got a couple little scrapes, but the gentleman that owned it was getting pretty elderly, and I think he bumped a couple things towards the end of, a, of his ownership of this car. Uh, but currently, the uh, range on this car is about 30 miles. That's not very good. Now these cars have, in the instrument cluster, they have 12 bars. 12 bars uh, is a 100% state of your battery whenever you have 12 bars. Uh, now they, it drops all the way down to zero bars, obviously. This particular car is down to about five bars, meaning the battery has degraded. Uh, you know, it's a 12 year old car. Uh, a lot of people would look at this and, and say, hey, the battery's bad. Well, the battery's not necessarily bad. Uh, yes, it, it could be replaced and it'd be nice to replace it. However, the cost to replace it far exceeds the value of the car. Uh, it costs $5,000, maybe more to replace the battery in it. The degradation in these batteries is kind of like tires. Um, as your tires, when they're new, they're 100% and you wear them down. And let's say you get down to 30%, like this is at, let's say 30% percent on tires doesn't fit the guy that it's winter time um, he's commuting a long distance or he's uh, uh, you know gravel roads wet roads that sort of thing I uh, didn't gonna do doing very good but you take somebody that lives in town and is not going going far and they're not going fast and, and not towing heavy load and stuff 30 percent on tire may last them for years uh, and, and depends on how many miles I put on obviously but same way with this car. The battery is down to, uh, let's say 30% there, 30 miles on it. And it, it will fit the needs of some people. Uh, so is the battery bad? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very low, but it's not bad. It's just that it's, uh, it's degraded. Uh, start with a fuel, full tank of fuel, you get down to 30% on your fuel. Well, it's time for some more fuel, or you can be careful and, and uh, drive it on out. So that's why I say the car is uh, probably okay to drive it on out. Who knows how long the battery will last on this car. The car has a uh, navigation. Um, it has uh, power windows, power door locks, air conditioning, all those things. Uh, whenever you use the heater or the air conditioning, that uh, reduces the number of miles that you can travel on a charge. Oh, I live up on a hill and when I go down the hill, the uh, brakes, when I'm braking, it, it generates power, which uh, puts power back in the battery. And sometimes I see as much as 34, 35 miles on this on this battery, uh, the range. So not 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 horrible. Uh, well, maybe it is. But um, again, somebody that's uh, commuting, you know, five, 10 miles each way each day, uh, or maybe they maybe they travel a little further and have a uh, charging port at work. Now this car, I charge it on 110. The reason 110 is, in my opinion, better on these first gen uh, Nissan Leafs, do not have any cooling system in the battery. So they have no way of cooling. So 
when you fast charge it, the battery heats up and the heat kills the batteries on these things. So you're better off to charge it with a 110 plug-in charger, 120 uh, charger. It'll, it'll charge slowly, but it won't build as much heat and the battery will last a lot longer. So I just plug it in um, and charge it overnight. It does say on the dash that it takes uh, three and a half hours to a full charge. Um, whether that's the case or not, I don't know. I just never check it. I charge it overnight. Now, what is kind of discouraging on this car to me is uh, the cost of the car initially, about $33,000 I believe. The other was a uh, tax rebate that you could take advantage of if you had that tax liability. If you didn't have that tax liability, it wasn't going to do you much good. A $33,000 uh, in 2011 would buy you a uh, very nice, uh, let's say, Toyota Corolla and put money in the bank. The thing about the uh, Toyota Corolla with 64,000 miles, it's just getting going. And the value of that car is going to be much greater than this car. This car is valued about $3,000 in its current state. The Toyota Corolla, uh, if you'd have bought it in 2011 and it had 64,000 miles on it, you couldn't. Uh, that the people would be rushing to your house to buy it for $3,000. Probably would be more like a $12,000, $15,000 range. Now the other thing is 64,000 miles on a car uh, that's only uh, 12 years old. Now, environmentally, the car is basically a throwaway. When that battery finally goes back all the way down to zero, the car's no good to you. What are you going to do with it? You can't fix it. Well, you could fix it, but it's not worth fixing. Uh, so, you know, off the scrap yard it goes. Does the battery get recycled properly? Probably not. Because it's going to cost money. Uh, it's just just not, not good for the environment as far as I'm concerned. Because uh, what it costs to the environment to build this car, have it only last 64,000 miles, I can't believe that uh, that's a... Uh, uh, a good thing and uh, okay the electricity it, it doesn't come without any environmental impacts uh, you know maybe it, maybe it comes from coal maybe it comes from uh, uh, hydro power I don't know but there's an environmental impact on it there so it's not great I think that Hellcat over there probably is is if you look at the whole picture is probably as environmentally friendly as this thing uh, It'll be around 50 years from now. It's a gas hog, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but uh, it costs a lot of energy to reproduce these cars there. So anyways, uh, you know, I'll show you around the car a little bit here. Uh, the various things, like I said, it's got uh, air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, uh, all those things, and uh, navigation. And the power, it's real zip. Okay, how does a Nissan Leaf uh, perform? Well, it actually performs pretty good. Uh, the power, step on it there, uh, zips zips pretty good. Not bad at all, but I am going up a hill and have the AC on and uh, accelerating hard and the mileage drops quickly. Um, so, you know, with the battery degradation, um, yeah, it's not good. But uh, however, if I lived in flat, town on flat ground run down the city short trips and stuff yeah, it could be quite fun but right now um, I live five miles out of town straight up a hill I gain about uh, 800 feet in elevation uh, it's just a uh, it, it draws the battery down fairly quickly uh, it uh, with the uh, electric motor it, it feels real strong uh, I've had people ask me well how fast does it go well I don't know but it'll go 80 um, and it does it pretty quickly. So, you know, it, it does the things that normal cars do, and it does it pretty effortlessly. And short of the battery, uh, the cars are pretty reliable other than the battery. Uh, but it's just no value in it when you get to this point uh, in the life of this car. So now what do I do with the car? I've driven it. Uh, do I like it? Yeah, it's kind of fun to, to drive up and down the hill and, and around. But where I live, uh, uh, five miles to the closest town and another seven miles, eight miles to the nearest uh, larger town. So 
I can barely make it to McMinnville and back. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't suit me very well at all. So, for me to register it, license, insurance, and all those things just to occasionally drive this car, no, nah, it's not worth it. I'm going to sell this car. Uh, I'll be lucky to get my money back out of the car what I paid for it, which is $2,500. So, we'll see. Um, but it was kind of fun to, uh, to see what it can and can't do. And I'm not overly impressed. Uh, I don't think uh, the electric car is uh, going to save the environment. Um, but, you know, uh, battery technology has come a long way since 2011. Uh, the newer cars get much more range. However, I'm not sure the batteries are lasting much longer, maybe a little bit, but as time goes on, they'll get better. But the electricity has a cost to be produced and environmental cost. And uh, I'm not sure that uh, in the big picture that, that uh, it really is uh, any environmental savings there, so. And there goes the Nissan Leaf. I just sold the car. It's going to a happy new owner. Now he's got about 70 miles to drive, maybe a little further. Uh, he thinks he can do it in two stops. I don't think so. I think it's gonna take him more than that to get there. But we wish him lots of luck and I told him don't turn the AC on. So we'll see how he does. I don't know if he's gonna give me a call uh, when he gets there or not. But uh, uh, yeah, electric cars are interesting. Rustic Dodge. And if you would, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And we'll catch you next time.